Senator. A special thank you to Baldy Corn for providing the food tonight. Tonight we're standing here to thank Hashem for the great miracle that occurred here this time last year. Although we were devastated by Hurricane Sandy, yet Baruch Hashem in our community, ish, everyone came out alive. We're standing at the water. We live on the water, and we love the water. Torah nim shalalamayim. Torah is cold and compared to water. That is also why this event is climaxed by presenting this community with a new Sefer Torah. We are also here to show our Karzatoyf appreciation and to thank each and every one that made it possible for the community to get off the ground, dust off, and rebuild itself. We thank you all from the largest donor to the little three-year-old girl in Lakewood who touched my heart when we received her one dollar donation. And of course, the people of Baltimore who once again made this long and tiring trip. Thank you! Flatbush, the Upper West Side, Yeshiva University, the young men and women from the Israeli Army, all who came to rid our homes of wet, muddy, and moldy contents. We thank all the host families who graciously hosted Seagate residents, all the volunteers who brought food, the Syrian community of Ocean Parkway, all the women who worked tirelessly to provide food and clothing for our community, the school children of Beis Yaakov, the other school children, especially those in Toronto that adopted a home in Seagate. If you are here, you helped someone, or perhaps a lot of someones in this community. As one community, it really means that you helped me as well. In the words of my friend Chaim Schmil Friedman and his family, and I quote, we may not have it all together. <laughs>
take action. action. We, we wouldn't would know when the water would stop. Where am I going to go now? now? So, first thing we did is we grabbed water, we grabbed, we grabbed food, and we grabbed the kids, and we started moving everybody up to the second floor. We started hearing electrical circuits, um, like zaps of electric. The next thing we know, Jenny starts screaming in the radio that a house on this block blew up, and another house blew up. And now we're saying that these houses are blowing up, what's going on here? It, it must be something, something with the gas line. line. So I'm thinking to myself, this is how it's going to end. The house is just going to blow up. I told my kids, there's a possibility this house is going to blow up. There was a traumatic evening that people did not. We came on a phone call late in the night because my daughter is off a garbage truck and we can't touch the lights again. I'm going to get more to get out. It will be seen some of the time. When the bus is going to be busy, I think, I'll be... Something happened in Sigurd, I don't know what. About 12 o'clock at night, I'm going to go to Mashwaga, and I'm going to go to Kemeran and Ka, and my guy, Neptune and Krabsi, that's where everything started. I couldn't come back. So I called up Yankee Meyer and I said, Yankee, I'm going to take the hot salt ambulance, I'm going around the neighborhood, and I'm going to start picking people up with this ambulance. I need you to send me school buses. Because I need to get these people out. They took us out of the gate. And the amazing job that Solo did, we came out of the gate with the three different lines of bosses in the SMU. Borough Park, Williamsburg, or Flatbush. And which one they took, and they drove me all the way to my daughter's house. While I was walking, I find myself closing car doors. I've seen some, some dead animals, cats, and stuff on the side of the street. And it was hard to watch what the devastation even just on the street. It looked like um, World War IV. It, like it, it sort of brought a sense of numbness over me uh, to the point where I was in, in utter shock. My brother and I were, working, were walking from outside of the gate to my father's house. We didn't say one word to each other. When I arrived in the basement, I made a big hit of the vent and told them to make them safe. And some of them were safe. So I said that the mental was all wet. It was so heavy from Vassar. And we just didn't know what, what, what to do next. We shot up all the way in the side of the toilet. But we were lost in the night. We were lost in the night. Something very devastating happened. You gotta sit down. Our house is afflicting Ganzen. And the kids, the kids in school, the kids in the lines, the math, just all is geschwim and all is. The best way to, to explain the, the, uh, the mood here and the feeling was it, it was eerie. It was very eerie to walk around the here and to see. And all he told me was Sisulis. I came back with the command center um, since we had cell problems. We had to set up some type of communication. The Borapak Shalom, they came out. The first night, help us with security. There was no police force here. We had over 50 guys patrolling the Seagate. The phone calls just didn't stop coming in from all over the world to help us in a time of need. Well, I drove down to Seagate. The devastation was massive. What you saw was not, but no matter what we do, no matter what collecting we dry goods, collecting fans and egg and blowers and humidifiers, trying to, it wasn't that they needed something, they needed everything. The first couple of days, I was like in the days, I couldn't get myself to walk down here to this, uh, to this basement because I was just too hard, terrific. For days, days after I got home, we don't want to start, I did nothing. I, other than pump the water out, I did nothing. I didn't know where to start. My plants in my house, my plants in coffee jewelry, you understand my plants, all of a sudden, you're homeless. Frankly, it was only the Orthodox community that really had a presence here. 
you know, you couldn't even get your cell phone charged except at the, the station that the Orthodox community set up and made clear that what they did was for everyone. You didn't have to be a member of the shul or whatnot. It was meant for the community at large. It was the only presence that... ...with the invitation. They took us in wholeheartedly. I called Mordechai on the day that I told him, you know, I can get you X amount of dollars, you know, from an appeal Landos. And he, I hear him on the whole line saying, this guy's nuts. That hungry from Eimur to Shabbos, as Morgan the Free gets on in Landau's Shiro campaign. And I hope it be, it's a hell of a... As many of you, as many of you, as many of you, we all know that he's not as many. Please give us whatever you can, every dollar counts, whatever you can give. It's mom that sold us before she some families don't have what to eat. I don't know what drove me, but I was consistently encouraged by the kind people I met. Hashi Jacobowitz from Scoops, he came in here and uh, first he walked in, he's like, what can I help? And he saw, without saying even what was going on, so he ran out there and started bringing food. I didn't see him for two weeks, all I saw him was on YouTube. Back in my mind, I was always thinking, what's with my parents, what's with people in see like, you know, I have to be here for them. <laughs> Um, the community needed uh, There was really just desperation on their faces. And all the classes had been leveled. All of the... Uh, there was no rich and no poor, no Jew and no non-Jew. And the request for help wasn't... No one was looking for a check. It was literally... It, they, were, they weren't even saying what they wanted help with. Their faces just simply said, help. I didn't know what's happening, what's going to happen next. If you let it come out, I'm five, 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 five. bosses came from Baltimore with volunteers. He started crying. Who are they? Who called them? Who's came? They came on their own to help destroy. So we're going to stay there until Mr. Maple Avenue is happy. Every group gets one sheet. You sit down, relax, I'll do the schlepping. And he slept, like, he was there for hours. I found out later, I'm sorry, I forgot his name. He is a robber of a shoot in Baltimore with 600 mispalmen. A car stops in front of my house and he says, do you see that guy pulling the refrigerator out of your basement? He's a cardiologist. They brought in the cavalry, didn't seem to stop. It was a never-ending kiddush of chesed. I think we show the greater community of mankind how you respond when another is in need. And we spent the day there just engaging in, in I don't think I can describe it as a whole dust parach, back-breaking labor, just to clear out some of the debris to allow people a head start on rebuilding their lives. I'm sure that you don't even realize what the storm can do to a family that has a lot of other things in their life. But the storm really can really, really uh, devastate people in a lot of different ways. So, it's thrilling. Yeah, I mean.
Rabbi Wallerstein, please come to the chuppah. Rabbi Wallerstein, to the chuppah. And Yankee Elephant, please come to the chuppah. Rabbi Wallerstein, Yankee Elephant, please come. <laughs>